So in our recent projects, we have used the Arduino IDE to program the ESP32 or the ESP8266. The Arduino IDE is simple to use for beginners, but when you start making some big projects that contains a lot of files and more than 100 or 200 lines of code, in that case, you might need to use another IDE and it's called VS Code. I'm gonna show you how to install it from this website. Here we can download it for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. For me, I have a Windows machine. It's an executable file and it's about 100 megabytes. Once it's done, we can open this file. Then I'm gonna accept, next. We can leave everything as default and hit next. I want to see the desktop icon and make sure to select these two options. Then we can hit install. Now we have installed the Visual Studio code to start using it to program ESP32 microcontrollers or other boards like the Arduino and the ESP8266. We can open it up by hitting finish. For the first time, we can select the theme. I like the dark modern mode. And let me maximize the window and move on to the next section. We're going to add some extensions that allows us to program these boards. You could install these extensions at any time by going to this icon. We're going to need the C and C++ programming language. Make sure to install it. While it is installing, let's search for Platform.io and we're going to search for the same name. Here it is, it's the Platform.io IDE. Make sure to install it as well. Next, we have to restart the program. I'm going to close it and open it up. If you haven't already used these kind of boards, you need to install a driver. We can search for this driver on the internet. CP2102 driver, and it's the first link. Under downloads, we have different options. For me, I have a Windows machine. We can select the third option. It's a zip file. We have to extract it. If you have a 64-bit machine, you have to select the first option. Otherwise, you need to install this one. Once you install it, you will be able to uh, program the ESP32. So the driver allows the computer to recognize the ESP32 microcontroller. We can create our first project by selecting the Platform.io icon. We can read this information, but I'm going to show you how to do that. If you have an existing project, we can open it up from here. For the first time, we are going to create a new one under Projects and Configuration. I think you guess it. Create new project. We can give it a name like First Sketch or First Project. Here we need to select the board. For most cases, it is called Node MCU 32S. I'm going to select it. The framework is the Arduino. We are going to use the normal Arduino code. Then we can hit finish. A few moments later. 2000 years later. One eternity later. And after a few minutes, it's about five to six minutes. We have this notification. I'm going to trust this and hit yes. Here we go. We have our project. I know what you think. It's not like the Arduino project that contains one file. Here we have different folders. So don't worry. The first file that you need to know is the platform.init or initialize. Here we have all of the configurations and the settings of our project, like the board that we are using, the platform, as well as the framework. And later on, when we install a library, it's going to be right here. We can get back to the home of the platform.io. You will see all of your projects under this section. For now, we have created one project. To install a new library, we go under this option and search for it. We're going to talk about later on. Here we have the boards. We can select the board from here as well. Also, we have devices. If the computer doesn't recognize the COM port, you won't be able to see it from this section. And the most important file in which we are going to write our code to program these boards is under SRC or source. Here we have the source code. It is called main.cpp or C++. I'm going to zoom in a bit using control plus. We have the sample code. Let's start by creating our first sketch, which is the blinking LED sketch. You could use the built-in LED of the ESP32, but I think this microcontroller doesn't have a built-in LED. That's why I'm going to use a breadboard and this blue LED to turn it on and off. And you will need a normal resistor to protect it. And I think I'm going to use one of these pins. So this is the pin number five. We are going to hook it up to the positive lead of the LED. 
Then I'm gonna go from the negative lead to the ground using the ohm resistor. Here we have a G and the pin on top. Make sure to remember the name of the pin that you are using. On top, we are going to create it as a variable using const int and call it LED pin D5. Then we're gonna go under the setup function and use the pin mode. I think we have a mistake. I'm gonna use the number five. We pass in the LED pin and the output keyword. Next, we have to turn it on and off under the loop function, which is called over and over again, using this show right, LED pin, and the high keyword to turn it on. Then we're gonna wait for one sec using the delay method. Here I'm gonna pass in 1000 milliseconds. Then we're gonna turn it off and wait for one second again. I'm gonna copy this. We've already talked about this blinking LED sketch. Here I'm gonna use low, and that's pretty much it. To upload the sketch to the ESP32 microcontroller, we have these options under here. It's not like the Arduino IDE, these options are on top. Here we have build, and we can upload it. We're gonna start by building the project to check if we have any mistakes. We can hit upload. For some ESP32 boards, you have to hold down the boot key when you see connecting. For me, it uploads the code directly without holding this key. And as you can see, we have the blinking LED. Before I finish this video, I want to talk about the serial monitor as well as installing external libraries for controlling the LCD display as an example. To install a new library, we go under this icon again and libraries. And here we can search for all of the libraries that are included inside the Arduino IDE, like the liquid crystal I2C to use the LCD display. Then we can hit search or enter. We are using this one by Frank. To install it, just click on it and add it to your project by pressing the button. Here we select the project that uses the library, which is our first project, and hit add. And once it's done, you will be directed to this file, platformio.init, that we have talked about at the beginning. If you can't see the project files, don't worry. You simply have to get back to the projects under open and open it up. Here we have this directive lib underscore dependency that means we are using this library inside our project now we are going to integrate the lcd display with the esp32 the gnd goes to the gnd of the board the vcc to the 5 volt pin or the vn pin next we have the sda goes to the sda of the microcontroller and the sel to the sel that depends on the microcontroller that you have the sda is number 21 and that's pretty much it Let's try to print something to the LCD. On top, we have to include the new library using hash include and the name, which is liquidcrystal underscore i2c.h. So another advantage of the VS code is that we have the autocomplete. Next, we're going to create an object of type liquidcrystal i2c and call it LCD. We have to pass in three parameters. The first one is the address of the module. It could be 0x27. Then we have the size. This LCD comes with 16 columns and two rows. Next, I'm gonna initialize it under the setup function using the command lcd.init and lcd.backlight. And finally, I'm gonna write something like lcd.println or print hello platform IO. And we don't need these lines of code. Go to File and Save All and upload it directly without hitting Compile. So I think that's all for today and I will see you in the next one.